Let's now give some examples uh, for question two, which deals with the relationship between specializations. Uh, a number of different examples, firstly to illustrate how solid and open lines work between specializations, and secondly, how different kinds of specializations work with levels on the one side and connections with the other, and how these levels and connections combine in quite complex way to, ways to form uh, interesting conceptual developments. Now, with uh, solid and open lines, let's let's take a closer look at uh, a definition or discussion of integration, and let's see what these characters say. And all I did was I went onto the web and I typed in integration of subjects, and this is what I found. Um, the integrated curriculum is a way to teach students that attempts to break down barriers between subjects and make learning more meaningful for students or to students. Now notice the first thing, look at the language here. It's break down barriers, okay? Now the coding we use is we say that that's an open uh, code and we're trying not to give a judgment call. But you can hear in terms of this that there's a very strong judgment call right from the get-go. Okay, it's breaking down barriers. Why do you break down barriers? Well, it's going to make learning more meaningful to students. So clearly, although this is going to be a definition of integration, it's, it's going to come down on the side of integration being a good thing almost by definition. Now, the idea is to teach around themes or organizing centers that students can identify with. So you choose something that the student identifies with in terms of where the student is, not where the subject is. It's things like the environment, life in school, and you can hear what they're trying to do. They're trying to identify things which students might like. Major concepts that goes on are culled from these broad themes and activities are planned that teach or inform these concepts. So you kind of have a situation where you use the theme to identify concepts. You don't use the subject to identify the concepts. You can see it's driven from the theme. And then they go give an example. For example, in a unit entitled the environment, students might learn about the concept of conservation and they might do it through starting their own recycling program, conduct a campaign for environmental awareness or a survey of which local businesses advocate, advocate uh, conservation. Now let's take a look at separation. Now the person I've used here is a guy by the name of Hurst and he's a fantastic person to read in terms of trying to understand how separation of disciplines work. Now there's a debate in education about the difference between um, subjects, disciplines and specializations and I'm not going to go into that. I think they hold as a broad category so let's let's just keep that there. But Hurst technically was working with disciplines and what he argued was and you can see it in the quote the domain of knowledge can be seen to be differentiated and there you get the key term into a number of logically distinct forms, none of which is logically reducible to any of the other or the others, either simply or in combination. The ways that disciplines work are different to each other. They have different logics, they have different ways of working, and they don't work clearly in ways where you can actually combine them easily because they are so distinct. And the argument over here for those that favor separation is they're going to say that these distinct domains of knowledge are actually very powerful in their own right. They enable the student to get access to powerful knowledges which will help them later on in their lives. And who are we to not introduce them to those powerful knowledge structures which are distinct? And if we don't do that, we're actually uh, failing the student. So there you can hear two very positive accounts. The first one of, um, of integration and the second one of separation. And we can kind of map these, give them diagrams, and let's start off with the separation story. And there you can see a, a simple picture where you have all the different disciplines or subjects as being distinct. Each one has their own set of uh, logical connections and their own content base. And it's important for us to make sure that students learn each one of those in their own right, because each does something different which the student actually needs. On the other side, you have the picture 
of the different disciplines or subjects coming together in a mixed way. They should cross over each other and their concepts and logical links should interlink, should combine in, in fresh, creative, original ways to do with projects and themes which speak to important aspects of our everyday lives and of our complex living in this world. A living so complex that no one subject can actually deal with it in its own right. Now there are two pictures for you and two definitions of integration uh, and uh, separation, but that always is only half the story. So now let's try and get into some accounts of how uh, subjects or disciplines or specializations work in their own right. How do they actually function? Now let's take a look firstly uh, at an account of how it works within biology. And this is a fantastic little pictorial diagram which catches how levels in biology work. And what I want you to notice as we go through it is, is that the concept gets heavier and heavier and heavier or bigger and bigger, contains more and more as it moves higher and higher. But not only that, I want you to also notice that as it gets bigger, it's systematic. It's a way of doing things which is ordered and works by a set of logical uh, ordered relations which make the different um, categories clear. So we start off with the species, the common variety of the household cat, and then we move on to the genus, which is the felis which is the common cat along with its wilder kind of characters. Still cats, but not in the home. And then you get the family of cats known as Fila D. Uh, and there you have the lions and the uh, tigers and the, the varieties of cats that actually exist. Uh, and we know from those cats that they are carnivores. Uh, and in fact, cats are very carnivorous. They cannot survive without uh, meat. Um, and But they exist with other kinds of carnivores, like, for example, bears on the one side. Now, carnivores exist as a part of a bigger class, and that class are mammals. So you have some animals which are carnivorous, uh, like cats, for example, but you have other animals which are not uh, uh, mammals, which are not carnivorous, like horses uh, or elephants, for example. Now, mammals exist as a part of a bigger group uh, known as the chordata uh, and there you have a very interesting situation where they have a far more general set of features for example um, they have i think it's called the post anal uh, extension where all these creatures have parts of their limbs which extend past the anus for example and that gives them a certain distinction as for the fact that they have a certain kind of uh, spine which gives them some kind of flexibility and you'll see that both the fish over there and the cat and uh, the bird all have a kind of a spine and you'll notice also that their limbs extend past the anus which thankfully ours does as well uh, and these then become a part of the bigger kingdom of animals in total. Now what I want you to get a picture of in me describing this is that for the biologist the word animal, animalia, is not what we take to be our every under day understanding of animals. It catches the whole kingdom of animals in all its complexity. It's a massively heavy concept which contains far more specific orders that work underneath that. And that is what subjects do. They introduce you to classifications of how the world operates in very organized ways that build to higher and higher and more general levels. Now we won't only see this in something like biology, we'll also see this in geography. Now this is a very simple account of uh, a spatial understanding of geography and I apologize to the geographers and in the next video I will give a more complex account of geography. But this gets the point across. You have, for example, uh, a situation where you've got different kinds of continents or in some cases almost like subcontinents, Africa, South America, Europe. Within Africa, you have countries like South Africa and Egypt. Within South Africa, you have provinces like KwaZulu-Natal, Gauteng, Eastern Cape. And within KwaZulu-Natal, you have Durban, Peter Maritzburg, and Nkandla. And then within Peter Maritzburg, you have me parking off in front of this computer giving this account. 
uh, but you can hear again how we're working with uh, levels and how the concepts go from very uh, general concepts to specific concepts. Now, with any kind of uh, uh, specialization, it is not going to only work with concepts that work from specific to general. It is also going to work with connections. And it's going to be, there's going to be a difference in how different kinds of subjects work with connections. Some are going to be really simple and clear. Here's uh, Aristotle's account of very simple and clear logical connections of which only one option is true, the other options are false. It's crystal clear what the implications are. Uh, and you can have a situation where all cats are animals. Well, that's clear. No cats are plants. And you go, yes, that's right. Some animals are cats. Yes, that's true. Some animals are not cats, true as well. And what you can hear over here is you're working with very simple logical connections which have crystal clear ways of operating uh, which are well defined by Aristotle himself and since then in logic. But yeah, we have a very different account. Okay, This is cats now done in a different way. Uh, and you have, uh, I think it was Erica Young writing this poem. Uh, sometimes the poem doesn't want to come. It hides from the poet like a playful cat. Now notice you are not working with a, a crystal clear logical relation here. You're actually working with a, a metaphorical or simile kind of relationship where you're comparing two things, both of which are complex in their own right. A playful cat on the one side and a poem on the other side. Now, it's not clear why the two are similar initially, but she'll try to give the beginnings of the account. Who, this cat, who has run under the house and lurks among slugs and roots and spiders' eyes, lit so long out of the sun that it is dank with the breath of the troll king. And suddenly it gets darker and deeper and the connections start to proliferate. So you have a complex and subtle set of connections rather than the simple and crystal clear connections which we saw in the first one. Now you're going to notice with specializations that some work with those crystal clear logical connections and others work with more complex and subtle connections. And it's very important that you get a sensitivity to how these work. Because the simpler the connection, the longer the sequence you can make which actually makes sense point by point by point by point. And these can build up to very complex uh, whole sequences when taken across their whole span like a program written by uh, programmers, for example, which has very simple logical connections throughout, but in the end creates this wonderfully complex uh, world. On the other side, a poem, because its connections are very subtle, you have to actually track them quite carefully within a small little micro area and get a sensitivity to how they all work together. Now let's try and combine those together in terms of trying to understand then how these um, subjects or disciplines or specializations tend to combine concepts and connections together. And I want to use the solo taxonomy idea to try and get at this. And right at the bottom, you start off with a situation where you don't even know what it is. You kind of can't even say what it is. You actually ask what this thing is. You haven't got a concept. It's, you've just got an idea that there's this empty spot which needs some naming or some talking about. Number two, your second level move is you do have an idea about the concept. You can kind of give an example about it or you can kind of give one account, but you don't know how the concept extends further than just that one idea. Uh, by level three, however, you're working with a number of descriptions of the concept and you can give a number of examples. So for example, if it's the animal that you're trying to work with as a concept, you can start to say, well, you've got dogs, you've got cats, you've got lions, you've got giraffes. You can kind of start to give an idea, many ideas about that concept. But by level four, what you're starting to do is you're starting to look for 
clear links or connections between the different ideas that start to pull together why the concept is the way that the concept is. And you can hear what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to just show you quickly in a pictorial way that any specialization is always going to work on the one side with um, conceptual ideas and on the other side with the way these link together. And it's only when you get those links together along with the concept itself, how the different parts of the concept hang together in an ordered uh, and logical or coherent way that you have a fully developed concept. So I hope that gives you the beginnings of an ability to start to take a look at how specializations work, the relationship between specializations being either solid or open, and the way specializations work on the one side with levels and the other side with connections, and how these combine together in very fruitful ways.